Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson and I'm here to bring you our first part of chapter 7.3 notes. Today we are getting into sample means. So in 7.2 we talked about sampling proportions. Now we're going to get into sample means of sampling distributions. So the sampling distribution of x bar or of the mean, you it says the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar describes the distribution of values taken by the sample mean x bar in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. So we've already talked about sampling variability and how if you pull a different SRS repeatedly over and over and over again, you're going to get a little bit different either proportion or in this case mean each time. So we talked about it with proportions, now we're talking about it with means. You get a different mean each time. Your means are not always going to be the same when you pull a new sample because every subject is unique and different. So your sampling means all together in a dot plot are what make up your sampling distribution. So here's your sampling distribution of a sample mean. So then we also talked about how when you have a smaller sample size, your means are, your variability is wider. Your means are more spread out. You know, it's got kind of this low curve with a bunch of different dips. When your sampling size gets a little bit bigger, so up here it was five, down here it's 20, your means are a lot closer and you almost approach a more normal, I mean, they've got this weird dip in the middle here, but you almost approach a more normal looking distribution. All right, so let's talk about the mean and the standard deviation of this sampling distribution of means. So when you take, when you find a sampling distribution of means and you display them all on a dot plot, how do we find the mean and the standard deviation of that sampling distribution? Well, just like in proportions, the mean of the sampling distribution of means is gonna equal your population mean. So that's helpful. Whatever your population mean is, is going to also be your sampling distribution mean. Great. Now, the standard deviation, that's a little bit different. Our standard deviation changed in proportion as well. Our standard deviation is also going to change for means. So what happens here is you take the standard deviation of the, of the population and you divide it by the square root of n. That's going to be your standard deviation of a sampling distribution of means. Okay, so this is what's a little bit different. Your means, your means are gonna stay equal, but your standard deviations, that's a little bit different, okay? Um, this, the same conditions must be met. You have to satisfy the standard, or the 10% condition, where your sample size is less than 10% of the population, okay? Um, as long as that is true, then you can use this equation to find your standard deviation of the sampling means and um, there you have it. Okay, so just one tip. Be careful with your symbols. That's what they're getting at in this tip here. So it says notation matters. The symbols p hat, x bar, n, p, mu, standard deviation, sigma, mu of p hat, standard deviation of p hat, mu of x bar, standard deviation of x bar. They are all different. They look really similar. They're repeated quite a bit but they're actually all different. So you have to be really careful. Remember that your samples wear hats, your statistics wear hats, your proportions do not. So like these four things right here, I'm sorry, not proportions, your populations. That's for population. That's your population mean. That's your population standard deviation. That's your population proportion. This is your proportion of the, of the sample. This is your mean of the sample. This is your mean of the proportion sampling distribution. This is your standard deviation of the proportion sampling distribution. This is your mean of the mean standard sampling di distribution. And this is your standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. Ooh, that was a lot of words and it's a big mouthful. Basically, the bottom line is be careful with your symbols. And here's the thing, you guys, if you are not confident on the symbols and which symbol to use, then don't use it at all. Just write it out. If you know you're talking, talking about a population mean, then write out the words population mean, and that's okay. You don't have to use the notation if you don't want to. All right, so let's take a look at an example. It says the number of movies viewed in the last year by students at a large high school has a mean of 19.3 movies, okay? With a standard deviation of 15.8 movies. 
Suppose a simple random sample of 100 students from a school was taken and calculate the mean number of mo movies viewed by the members in this sample. Okay, so part A is identify the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar. A, super easy. The mean of your sampling distribution of means is going to equal your population mean, which is 19.3 movies. Give it context. That's my warning. Context. Label your answer. Um, B. B gets a little bit more fun. So calculate and interpret the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. Verify that the 10% condition is met. I like to do the verifying that the 10% condition is met first. So address that first. Now, we don't know the size of the high school, but what we are told is that it is a large high school and you know that N equals 100. So we can say something along the lines of, it is safe to assume that 100 students is less than 10%. of the student body at a large high school. Now again, there's a bunch of different ways that you could write this, but that is just one example of how I could address that issue. That's just one way that I could write that out. But it is safe for us to assume that 100 is less than 10%. If it's a large high school, it's gotta be over 1,000 students, okay? Um, so then we go to work on calculating the actual standard deviation. So the standard deviation of your sampling distribution of means is going to be the standard deviation that was that is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. So in that case, it's 15.8 divided by 10, or in other words, 1.58 movies but then you also have this magic piece of interpreting that. So let's write out what that means. Um, I'm gonna have to write this very small and I'm very sorry. In SRSs, the sample mean typically varies. Oh, sorry, the sample mean number of movies typically varies. Am I writing small enough for you? Hopefully you can read it. Typically varies by about 1.58 movies. From the true mean, and it is the true mean because the true mean is equal to the sampling distribution mean, from the true mean of um, 19.3 movies. Ooh, sorry for my tiny, tiny handwriting there, but that's my interpretation of that. All right, so let's just talk about sampling from a normal population. Okay, so we've talked about the center and spread so far. We talked about mean, we talked about standard deviation, we looked at the standard deviation equation for a sampling distribution of means. But we haven't talked about the shape because that's typically how you would describe a population. You'd describe shape, center, and spread. So we did center and spread. Here's the shape conversation. Um, the shape of your sampling distribution of means is going to depend on the population distribution, the shape of the population distribution. And that is true for proportions as well. So your proportion sampling distribution shape depended on the population di distribution shape. The same is true for means, okay? So what happens here is if your population is normal, so like here's our parent population, this is very much a normal distribution. Here's some sample data. My sample here, I only have five samples in this, but my five samples still kind of take on a normal distribution. Now down here I have 10,007 samples very much normal distribution, okay? So the bottom line is, if your population distribution is normal, then so is your standard, then so is your sample distribution, okay? Okay. 
And this is true no matter what the sample size. No matter how many times you repeat the process of pulling the sample and finding the mean and then putting it on the dot plot, like up here they only did it five times, down here they did it 10,007, you're still gonna get a normal shape. So sampling distribution of the sample mean when sampling from a normal population. Suppose that a population is normally distributed with a mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then the sampling distribution of X bar has a normal distribution when the mean is equal to the mean of the population and the standard deviation is the standard deviation divided by the square root of N, provided the 10% condition is met. Great, there's our kind of like theory there. So let's talk about an example. It says the heights of young women follow a normal distribution with mean 64 and a half inches and standard deviation two and a half inches. First, part A says find the probability that a randomly selected young woman is taller than 66 and a half inches. All right, so in part A, I know I'm looking at a normal distribution. I'm given the mean and the standard deviation. I simply need to find that probability. So if I look at my normal curve, Here's my 64.5 inches, two and a half is my standard deviation. So then your first standard deviation, that's 65 and a half, 66 and a half, 67 inches. Um, going down two and a half would be 62 inches. Then I would go up to 69.5. I would go down to 59.5. Okay. I'm looking for what's the probability that a woman is taller than, a young woman is taller than 66 and a half. 66 and a half is about right there. That's the probability I'm looking at, 66.5 inches. What is that region? Okay, in normal CDF, so there's my curve, that's helpful. Now, when you type in things into normal CDF, you have to label what you are typing in. So some of you lost points on your chapter six test with this, but you have to make sure you label these values. So my lower bound is 66.5. My upper bound is positive infinity. My mean is 64.5 and my standard deviation is 2.5. Okay, so I'm gonna type all that in and see what I get. I've got, I go to second distribution, I do 66.5, positive infinity, 64.5, and then 2.5 for my standard deviation, and I get a probability of 0.213 roughly. So my probability is, 0.213. Okay, now let's look at B. It says, find the probability that the mean height of an SRS of 10 young women exceeds 66 and a half. So part A was just simply finding the probability that this happens in the population period. Now part B says, what happens if you take a random sample of 10 girls? You take a random sample of 10 young women what's the probability that the mean height of those 10 young women exceeds 66 and a half inches? What's the probability that the mean exceeds 66 and a half inches? Okay, so here's where life is different because now we're looking at a sampling distribution because we're taking a sample rather than just the whole population altogether. So for the sampling distribution, I know that my mean of my sampling distribution is the same because it's gonna equal the population mean but my standard deviation is going to be that 2.5 divided by the square root of 10. When I take 2.5 and divide it by the square root of 10, I get 0.79. Um, now, I'm using that equation, which means that I must state the fact that um, we know that, I must state the 10% condition. We know that 10, is less than 10% of all young women. Okay, so that's an easy one to state because 10 to, if you think of all young women, what did they say between certain ages? Were there certain ages? I don't know what their definition of young women is, but if you think of young women, there's obviously more than 100 young women in all of everywhere. Okay, so it's safe to say that 10 is less than 10% of that. Okay, cool. Um, 
So now let's do the probability of this curve. So this curve looks a little different because my standard deviation changes. So I'm still at 64 and a half. But now if I take 64.5 and add 0.79 for a standard deviation, I'm at 65.29. If I subtract 6.79, I've got 63.71. And I'm looking at 66 and a half, which now, because my standard deviation changed a lot, is gonna be just this tiny little piece up here. So what is that proportion? So this is my 66 and a half. Um, so then I got to plug that in. Again, you can go back to normal CDF, but you need to label your things, label your values. So my everything is the same except standard deviation. My lower is 66.5. My upper is positive infinity. My mean is still 64 and a half. But now my standard deviation is 0 0.79. And what do I get there? So second vars for your distribution option, go to normal CDF, type all your stuff in, and I get a probability of 0.0057 roughly for my probability. So the probability that you get a sampling distribution of 10 girls where they have a mean of 66 and a half sampling 10 girls mean of 66 and a half that's a much smaller chance like half a percent up here you had 21 percent of selecting any child any young girl that was 66 and a half inches tall but now if you're taking an srs of 10 what are the chances that what's the probability that they have a mean of 66 and a half your probability goes way down so here's just a visual representation of um, what happens when you go from looking at the population to the sampling distribution. So this purple curve down here is the population distribution. We saw that in the previous example that it was a lot more spread out because your standard deviation was 2.5. So naturally your normal curve is going to be a lot more flatlined, if you will. It's gonna be a lot lower of a normal curve. It's still normal shaped, it's just not as high of a peak and it's spread out a lot, a lot more. So that's your population distribution. Now the sampling distribution, this was the one where your standard deviation was the 0 0.79. So because your standard deviation is so much smaller, it's a lot closer together. So that's why when you look at that red region that we had, where in our sampling distribution, it was such a small proportion of people or of sampling means, I should say, of sampling means that were above 66 and a half, whereas in the population, it was a much bigger percentage. You know, this was the 21%. This one was like 0.5%. Um, so you have such a smaller portion because your standard deviation is a lot smaller. So then therefore your normal curve in general is just a lot narrower, okay? So when you compare the sampling distribution of the sample mean for the SRSs of 10 young women with the population distribution, you can see those differences. Here's your AP exam tip for this piece. It says many students lose credit on pop probability calculations involving X bar because they forget to divide the population by the standard deviation of N. Remember that averages are less variable than individual observations. The purple curve was just us picking one kid. The blue curve was us picking an SRS of 10. Okay, purple curve, one kid, one young woman blue curve, SRS of 10, and then getting the sampling mean. So you're gonna have a lot less variability when you do that. All right, so that takes us to the end of the first part of section 7.3. We'll wrap up 7.3 in our next video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.